What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. So in this video, we'll be very briefly discussing the process of plastering the walls that you have just done the prep work for. Hopefully, if you've been following the series, you've seen us go from the cradle of a project right at the beginning when your house or your room that you're working on is a bit of a wreck, coming right to the towards the end now where we're gonna start applying the plaster and turning it into that fantastic looking room that you are trying to achieve. So possibly stay tuned, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing and enjoy the video. But for the project that we are going to be tackling today, Louis and I, yes, we've already started the plastering work. So if I show you what we've done so far, we've tackled uh, most of the board work, we've plastered the ceiling uh, already and the extension part. Now the last bit to tackle is the reskin, which is the old kitchen where we did the bonding and we applied the blue grit. So arguably the hardest part uh, of the project. So that's the bit that we're going to be tackling today. We're not going to go into too much detail with regards to the process uh, of plastering as we've already covered it on the channel. What I'll do is I'll just put a, a link here uh, to the video which uh, discusses the process of not only how to plaster a wall but how to plaster a room as well. And also I'll link in the description here or in the video here uh, the video which talks specifically about the timings of each plastering stage. It's worth looking at both of those videos because they go into much more depth uh, about how you get that quality finish when applying plaster. So if you're not sure, uh, watch those videos. It will make a big help in getting that nice finish that you're looking for. But we're gonna be tackling uh, the reskim side uh, of the project, so the kitchen side. That's what we're gonna be tackling today. So we hope you enjoy the video. Okay, <clears throat> so when it comes to mixing up your plaster, uh, for these walls here, they are fairly uh, average suction, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a British gypsum multi-finish, which is ideal for a reskin like this. If you were going on board, um, which is part of the extension, then you could use a uh, British gypsum board finish. Um, so the consistency that we're looking for is ever so slightly thicker. Uh, than what you would put on with board because obviously we're going over blue grit, we're going over bonding so we want it to have a little bit more volume to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this up as we've shown in other videos and then we'll show you the consistency we're looking for to apply on these walls. Okay, so this plaster now has been mixed up and the consistency, as you can see, is, is, is relatively thick. It's still got obviously plenty of life in it, but you can see that it holds its shape on the buckets here. That's really uh, what you want. You want it to be able to have quite a bit of volume going over rough walls like this. Now, naturally, because it's mixed up a little bit stiffer, you have a little bit less time on it. However, if you're inexperienced or you're fairly slow to applying plaster, um, there is a product uh, here, it is called Extra Time. Now, it would be better to knock the gear up, mix the gear up a little bit stiffer like what I've done here and put extra time in so you've got more time to work with it rather than mixing the plaster up really wet and then trying to go over walls like these. Because there's blue grit on the walls, really wet plaster, you won't cover uh, the blue grit well enough. So it's actually better to still mix it up a little bit stiffer, add the extra time in, and then you'll have plenty of time to apply the plaster. Uh, so just as a little tip for those who are a bit experienced or a DIY, that will make all the difference. It's a very good product. Just follow the instructions on the sachet as to how much you should use. Also when it comes to mixing up, especially if you're mixing up a bit stiffer, what you don't want to be doing is mixing up wet, stiff, wet, stiff. So just be careful with how much water you're using. And we actually like to use uh, these buckets uh, from Rafina. I know we mentioned Rafina a lot, we're not uh, sponsored by them in any way, they do make some great stuff. Um, I think they've just bought these new buckets out recently, I don't know if they're online at the time of this video going up. Uh, but this one here is uh, uh, their, their new gauging bucket, I think they're doing three sizes, I think maybe 10 litres, 15 litres and 18, something like that. But the really nice thing about the 15 litre bucket, I don't know how well it's showing up on the video, 
but there's just an ever so slight line on the bucket here. By pure coincidence, I'm assured by Rafina, is that line is the exact amount you need uh, to mix up uh, the plaster properly. So if you struggle gauging water perfectly every time, I don't think they're the cheapest buckets in the world. I don't know what the list price is because uh, we were sent them before they could go online. Um, but the 15 litre bucket, uh, that line is exactly how much you need for plaster. So if you struggle, it's worth investing in those buckets. They're fantastic buckets. And um, certainly when we do our next refin we will be buying loads of these because they are truly uh, superb. But it's just a little tip. But if you don't have those buckets, it's around about 12 to 12 and a half litres of water for a bag of multi-finish. So once you've mixed that up, get it to the right consistency, we can start applying it to the walls. Okay, so as we really mentioned, we're not going to go into great detail with regards to applying the plaster. We've already discussed it on the channel. But as a general, we're looking to do a decent amount on the trowel. And because this is the kitchen, I know the unit's going to come around this height, so that's where I'm going to go to. And you're just looking to roll the plaster onto the wall, like so. Speed. So we did a video recently on how to mix up plaster properly. So as long as you've not spent too long mixing plaster up, we'll have plenty of time. We'll have about half an hour to 40 minutes to plaster the bridge. these three walls on and we'll catch up once it's all on. Okay so these three walls now have been put on and they've been allowed uh, to pull in and all I've done is I've gone over and flattened it with my trowel and now at the point now where I need to apply the second coat but just to show you what you should be looking for when you apply that second coat the walls should look like the following. So if I go right up to the wall you can see here if I was just to run my fingers on the wall here, you can see that there's still moisture in the wall here, so it's still uh, slimy. And that is about the right time to apply the second coat. So you can see that my fingers, if I just push them, they're not digging in uh, to the wall to the point where they're going back to the substrate, uh, but there's still a bit of grease on the plaster when my fingers are sliding across it, which will enable that second coat to really grip onto that first coat. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that second coat now. Just as a general uh, rule as well, usually if going over standard walls, uh, if you put, say for instance, one bag of plaster on the first coat, it will usually about, be about half a bag on the second coat. So it's roughly around about half uh, what you use on the first as you will need on the second. Also, uh, you won't need the plaster to be as thick as on the first coat because what you're going on is uh, wet anyway, you'll have a little bit longer uh, to work with the plaster once it's on the wall. So it doesn't need to be quite as stiff to have that volume you needed on the first coat, or at least what I needed to get over these rough walls. So it's exactly the same as the first coat. Nice even strokes. You see, 
going to start at the bottom of the wall and as you're lifting up you're just going to roll the trowel. The longer the stroke, usually the flatter you'll get the plaster. So I've done my plaster a little bit stiffer than normal because these walls are still a little bit rough I wasn't able to get rid of all the deviations in the plaster on the first coat so I still want to be able to put the plaster on relatively thick so I'm probably putting this on around about one and a half to two millimetres thick the first coat was about uh, two millimetres or so because there was quite a bit of uh, bonding and glue grit to get rid of so it needs to go on fairly thick just to straighten these walls out you'll notice it's not particularly neat when applying the plaster that's okay what we really want to do at this point is just to get it on as flat as we can and as quickly as we can. At this point, the plaster is too wet to be able to get a perfect finish. So, if you're putting plaster on the wall and you've got lots of trowel marks, especially if you're using a brand new trowel, don't worry about it. Just focus on getting nice even coverage on the wall. You'll notice I haven't started from the top. Uh, you can do if you want. The reason I prefer not to is because I'm quite tall. I can get the plaster about probably nine inches or so. I can see then this, this is a 2.5 meter uh, seam, I think. So I can get about nine inches off the top. So all I need to do afterwards is just run a trowel all the way along. It just works out a little bit quicker for me to do the top second. You can see just working the trowel backwards and forwards two or three times what this is doing is just taking the air just taking the air out of the plaster okay so what we're going to do now I've just applied the second coat on the walls and I'm actually going to flatten this down with a speed skim as we've said many times on our videos what we're going to use is the Rafina plastic one but in reality and you'll do don't worry if you don't have one, all you will need to do is just leave it uh, for a bit just to pick up, so just let it uh, pull in a little bit uh, so it's just firmed up and then you'll be able to go over it a bit more efficiently with a trowel. If you are using a trowel, you want nice, long, flat strokes just to take out those trowel lines. But as I have a spatula, I'm going to use it. It also enables you to flatten it straight away. So what we're going to do is just nice and carefully into the corners. Just a nice flat angle. We just take out some of these channel lines. You can just see, hopefully, it's showing up in the video. Just how quickly these tools flatten the work. Let's say I could use a trowel, but why make my life harder when I don't have to? And it'll be perfect. Just looking to take some of the, the worst of it out. Get rid of any excess. If you don't have one of these, or a tool like it, it is worth considering buying one. I don't know about the Ox Speed Skin, which is probably the most popular, uh, but certainly. Uh, the one that we use is, I think, about 
35 pound, I think. Um, we do have an array of sizes. I just happen to really like the 800. It's so convenient, certainly for kitchens, because uh, it's small enough uh, and agile enough to get around things like sockets. Um, so if you're only gonna get one, probably recommend the 800. So hopefully you can see behind me just within two or three minutes, uh, the walls have been drastically flattened down using one of those speed skims. So I appreciate for those that have a bit long in the tooth and have been plastering for many, many years. It almost seems like a little bit of a cheat, but the reality is plastering is such hard work on your body. Why would you not make every effort to make your life easier? Uh, with such a reasonably blunt price tool, it makes the light work of flattening these walls. That's not to say that that's the only flat that we will do. Uh, when this is pulled in a little bit, we'll actually go over it with a trowel just to compress that plaster, just to close it in before we start doing our wet trowel. So we're actually gonna catch up when we get to that point. If you've got to this point in your plastering set and you are still ahead, well done. In reality, the hard work is now pretty much finished. So what I now recommend is if you flatten this and you've got plenty of time, now's about the right time just to clean out your buckets clean all your tools and just get everything ready so you can start going through those wet trial processes uh, after you've compressed the plaster. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to throw away the excess plaster, clean out my buckets so I am ready to go when this is pulled in. Okay, so we are at the point now where we're going to compress the plaster with our trowel. Now what we've done already, and if we show the videos, we've just run the speed skim over it and let it pull in. So now just before the wet trowel, what we want to do is go over it with our trowel just to compress that plaster so, not, so we don't get loads of fat coming off when we start adding water. Now when we did the timing video, which I'll link somewhere on the screen um, to that video, uh, some mentioned that it was difficult to see in the light uh, how wet the plaster was. Now if you were to, hopefully this is a bit better now, if you were to have a look at the wall here, if I was to run my fingers on it, you can see that there's still a little bit of moisture in the wall, but it's firmed up quite a lot. So if I was to run my trowel over the plaster, you can see straight away, it's just pushing that plaster in. That is about the right time to compress the plaster where um, the plaster isn't digging in anymore, but there's still a little bit of moisture, a bit of grease on the surface, uh, for the trout to glide over, so you shouldn't need any water. Well, as a side note, for those that are sponge floating, perhaps you're a bit inexperienced with plastering and you are considering using a sponge float, this is the time uh, when you would spray the wall down and then sponge it up. Now, we're not going to do that in this video, but for those that are using that technique, that's when you would want to do a sponge float at this point here. But what we're going to do is we're going to crack on uh, with uh, compressing this plaster. Now to start with, we're going to start by tackling uh, the corners. So what I've actually done is I'm actually going to take you off the tripod just to show you uh, how we neaten up our corners in our plastering sets. As we see all too often, certainly with inexperienced plasterers, that the corners haven't come out very nicely. And the reality is, it's because they haven't uh, really neaten up those corners early enough in the set. So at the time when you're compressing the plaster, this is where you really start sharpening up those edges. So we're gonna just, we're gonna show you how we go about doing that when we are plastering. So hopefully you can see here on the screen that the edges here, they do not look particularly nice. So to neaten these up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the edge of our trowel and we're just gonna run the trowel down the side like that, like so. And then we're going to get the toe of our trowel and then just push it in like so. And then just pull out from the corner. Feed that back in. Doesn't have to be perfect at this point, but just. Push that corner back in. Pull away from the corner. Like so. I 
say, it doesn't matter too much if they're not neatened up perfectly. So you're gonna cut that plaster off because there's a lot of build up here. We're just gonna run the trowel along here and then just push that back in like so. bit of moisture there. <clears throat> when it comes to the corner here, all we're going to do, instead of using a corner trowel, we're going to push down. Same again, into the corner, push down, like so. And all we're going to do is gently Push into the corner, drag down. Dig out the top, like so. You can just see that plaster, hopefully, and the light compressing nicely. Just see how sharp that corner's getting. Very little effort required. So hopefully you can see straight away, it's just starting to clean those edges up. You can see we'll do the same going along there. So, 
So if you have a look at that wall now, the plaster is no longer looking grainy, it's been really pushed in hard. So now what we can do is we can leave this for 10-15 minutes and then we can apply that wet trap. Okay, so when it comes to the wet trap, we've mentioned this before again in the timing video. Easiest way to tell when the right time to do the wet trap is if you brush the wall and it's not leaving any scratch marks on the brush, that's about the right time. What I'm going to do is start from the top of the wall. Brush out the corners and just fill out any little holes that you might have. And then, where you want the trap to go, uh, apply the loose. Reasonably decent pressure. And about a 30 degree or so angle. And for the first wet trowel, we always prefer to go up and down, like so. And then every so often just get rid of the fat. So again, brush out, corner, turn your toe, and then brush the water, or apply the water, where you want to go. Okay, so that is it for the first wet trail. What we're going to do now is we're going to leave that for 15 20 minutes again, let that pull in a bit, and then we'll apply our second wet trail, which will be a cross trail. Okay, so we are now at the point where we're going to do our second wet trail, and that wet trail is going to be a cross trail. Now, as you can see in the camera, I've already run the tops, just put a little time of my life a little bit easier. Do that off camera. All we're going to do is just run the brush across the wall and then gently go up to the corner. Nice wide angle, lots of pressure. And then just go side to side. You should be getting very little to no fat coming off. So lots of Lots of pressure. Any res residual fat in the corners, any residual fat in the corners, just brush those out. And then just wipe off where the water was left. Just use the toe of a trowel. Just to do the corners. So at this point, it's really big and nice. Even colour. Shouldn't really be seeing any stripe marks anymore. If there were any, they should all be gone. 
This really is the finishing stages of the classroom set. And the final thing to do is just get a small brush and just brush out those corners just to really heat them up in case there's any leftover fat anywhere. Just go through any corners you yeah. have. <coughs> So that's the end of the set. The only thing which is left to do now is to do a dry pass, which we'll probably do off camera, which is nothing more than uh, passing over the wall with a plastic trowel. Don't worry if you don't have a plastic trowel, just the trowel that you've been doing, using the whole way through the job. If you just make sure you just keep it clean, no water, and give it a light pass over. 10 or 15 minutes after that second wet trowel, and it should come up really nice, a beautiful eggshell finish that you're looking to achieve. But that really is the end of the project. Can you believe it's taken us about two and a half days? Unfortunately, Louis wasn't here today, uh, but uh, for us just to crash out this job, uh, to really transform this space into something that the homeowner can be proud of. So we hope that this video has been helpful. Hopefully it's given you some confidence uh, so that you can tackle projects like this in your own home, transforming it into that dream house that you've been looking for. So just to show you the uh, final panoramic, as it were, of the project now it is completed. So they are the final uh, images of the job that we have to produce in just a short time. We're certainly really pleased with the uh, result. We uh, have no doubt that when it's painted, it will come out looking fantastic. And in reality, it has completely transformed this space. So if you enjoy videos on rendering and plastering, consider subscribing to the channel. We hope you found this video helpful. Consider giving it a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.